So I'm an old guy. I was born in 1930, but I'm trying to preserve my youth. And I think like doing the weird trip that I did when nobody else was doing it is really a part of the secret to enjoying life and being healthy and living a long, healthy life. Um, my contemporaries have fallen by the way. I've seen, you know, people who are 10 years younger than me laying in hospital beds and, you know, being all fucked up. And uh, I really seriously, and I practice, you know, body things every day and have for years and even more intensely for the last 11, 12 years since I stopped being, you know, trying to be a regular person out there. And it's been uh, very, uh, very illuminating. When I was very young, I haunted libraries because my only connection with any kind of culture that was different than the one we live in was to go and browse libraries. So I lived in the books, I lived in the pictures. I discovered at a very early age that I had psychometric abilities. And what I would do is get a copy of this photograph and I would just gaze at it and stare at it for a long period of time. And finally, I would start getting into a trance state, and I would start feeling what that person felt at the moment the photograph was taking. In other words, going into their life, the psychometry again. Basically, that's how I learned what was really going on and why these people were doing this and what it was all about. And then, of course, after I said, aha, that's what's going on with these people who enlarged a piercing or who danced to ecstasy with these piercings in their body, uh, I said, I've got to try that now in the re real world, in 3D reality. So that's how my secret life got started. And little by little, I did all the things that I could see in there. I would look this way to the regular people, to my parents and, and all the contemporaries and the uh, teachers and whoever else I had to deal with in life. But in secret, I would go down to my mother's fruit cellar and rip flesh. I didn't give a shit if I died. I mean, I was willing to face even death because this was, to me, the purpose of living, <laughs> was to go to that great extreme to learn, to wind, find out, you know, what happens? What happens if I do this? I don't care if I die. I'm going to learn. I'm going to have a hell of an experience here. Fakir, he, he's to be commended because he had such a drive. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't going to be stopped or influenced by anyone. He was definitely on his own vision quest to, like, explore, you know, the entire gamut of sensations and pleasures, whatever, that these activities may bring. And he even taught himself photography as an early teenager to document his activities. After Modern Primitives came out, he was enabled to uh, quit his advertising agency job and make a living as giving workshops and lectures to people all over the planet. All right, guys, we're going to be together for about five days here. And uh, hopefully, hope hopefully days. we have <laughs> confined parking and things like that so <laughs> we can go on. Um, we'll be working mainly in this space. I'm sure you've all kind of had some experiences uh, where you're doing body piercing where something unusual happened. 
people freaking out or jumping or being going into trances or something like that. The more we know about this, the more we can make this a meaningful experience for the people that come to us for our <laughs> services. Every time you pierce somebody, especially if they're disturbed or anything in the chakra where you're piercing, and you gather all that stuff, and it could be pretty icky. It could be pain, sorrow, grief. It could be any number of things coming out of them. It could be a horrible kind of a possession that they're under. It comes come zooming out of there, and it'll end up in you. You take that on as part of your contract as a piercer. You're functioning basically as a shaman when you do a body piercing. You may or may not believe it or realize it, but you're functioning as a shaman. You are dealing with people's psychic energy as well as their physical body. And the physical body is the means by which you get to the inner being, the inner energy. I define a shaman as one who is by appointment or training or both is able to pass between the seen and the unseen worlds. To bridge the gap between the worlds. To sense and manipulate energy fields. To operate spontaneously in the illogical, irrational, childlike world of the low body or the shadow world. And thereby do some kind of change or some kind of transformation. What we're going to do is we're going to get a nice cycle of breathing. I want nice deep breath into the nose and out through the mouth. You've been pierced before, so I'm not going to treat you like a newbie. Um, as you know, uh, pain is a medium that you go through to get the end product, right? It's why are you in a body? What's this all about? Why, why are we here in a body? What the hell is it all about?